The Northern Cheyenne was sent to Oklahoma to put on a reservation in Darlington in 1877. There was little food, diseases were common, and there were no buffalo. The uh, Northern Cheyenne in 1877 had been put on a reservation down in Oklahoma near Fort Reno. There was no game. The, the tribe was starving from lack of food and diseases like malaria and dysentery. The people were dying daily. So Dull Knife and Little Wolf led around 300 Cheyenne toward the Yellowstone country. The majority of the Indians that followed them were either children, women, or elderly members of the tribe. With only 92 warriors, they began their journey on September 9, 1878. The Cheyenne were led by two chiefs. They had the, the old man chief, uh, Dull Knife, and then their, their warrior chief, who was Little Wolf. And they uh, had received permission to move their camp away from the rest of the tribes that were there and moved a little farther north from the rest of the reservation. So they decided to undertake this 1,500 mile trek to go back to their homeland in Wyoming and Montana. Then by the time the cavalry uh, started after them, uh, the Cheyenne had got as far as west of Dodge City and had crossed the, the river. They decided to take what they called the Old Route, which led them west of the Fort Dodge. Unfortunately for them, they were caught by troops from Fort Reno. The, the first battle they had was before they crossed the border into Kansas from Oklahoma, and they had a little skirmish there where uh, a few of them were, were uh, killed at that point. When the Fort Reno troops finally found them, they sent an Arapaho scout named Chalk to create the terms of their surrender. Dull Knife disagreed, since they would have been forced to return to the reservations they had just escaped. And they finally got to this area, which is where Battle Canyon is located now. And uh, they were here two days before Colonel Lewis and the rest of the troops uh, caught up with them. Uh, they had time uh, with the two days to set up the ambush. Lieutenant Colonel Lewis led the colonists in the Battle of Punished Woman's Fork. Colonel Lewis is a very interesting person to study and try to learn about. He was born December the 24th, which is Christmas Eve, 1829. And so mostly during his life, he, he basically served in all these different forts in the Southwest. Any time that there seemed to be an uprising or some conflict or something, the higher ups would send him to those spots to try to defuse them and so on. And so he was probably one of the most important people that there was as far as the military was concerned because of his leadership abilities and things like that. He served twice at Fort Dodge as the commander there. And of course, the last time that he served at Fort Dodge was when the Cheyenne were coming up through here. And uh, he was actually head of all, everything at that time. So that's one thing. And, and this was the last Indian battle in Kansas that ever occurred was the Battle of Punish Woman's Fork. Making him the last person in, in the Indian Wars in Kansas to be severely wounded. And of course, he died then on his way to Fort Wallace. The fighting started on September 13, 1878. With a Cheyenne tribe hiding in the hills during the night, the troops were forced to retreat the day after fighting due to low ammunition and lack of food and water. They were here two days before Colonel Lewis and the rest of the troops caught up with them. Uh, and they finally got to this area, which is where Battle Canyon is located now. As the cavalry entered the valley, Little Wolf attacked the, the troopers at that point, trying to lure them up the valley into the area where Battle Canyon is so they could spring their ambush that they had set up for them. Uh, but as, they, as it happened, as the, the scouts were coming up the valley about 300 yards in front of, of the main column, uh, one of the Cheyenne warriors fired an early shot at one of the scouts and that alerted them to the ambush so they didn't get, get trapped in, in the ambush. During this time, uh, Colonel Lewis was, uh, he had dismounted his cavalry and they were uh, pushing the fight from the western uh, side of the canyon on the western hills and 
he had split his forces and sent his infantry across the creek to the east side. And so they were, uh, had fought the, the Cheyenne until they backed them into this one canyon, this last canyon of the group. What's interesting is the fact that out here at the battle, there, you know, there wasn't really that many warriors. And you, if you were 13 years of age, you were considered a warrior that young. When you talk about, what, 85 or 90 possibly, and the military was probably 250 strong, plus all their Teamsters and their Scouts and everything else. So they probably had, you know, close to 300 people. As the uh, uh, soldiers had pressed the fight and back to Cheyenne into the canyon, uh, one of the sharpshooters of the Cheyenne riflemen, he uh, fired at Colonel Lewis, who was mounted at the time, and it hit his horse in the hind quarter and knocked his horse out from under him. And uh, so then, uh, he picked up a, a weapon and kept urging his troops forward, uh, back and forth in front of his troops, uh, urging them on foot. Uh, so then the, the Cheyenne sharpshooter took another shot, and this shot hit him in the inside right thigh, and it severed the femoral artery. They put Colonel Lewis on a, on a wagon on the ambulance, and he went back to the southwest uh, beyond the ridge to where the rest of the troops were and, and the wagons. The next in command, uh, Captain Mock, decided that, that uh, they had the Cheyenne surrounded. They had them confined to one canyon. And so he relented on the, on the uh, pressing of the attack and they retreated back to where Colonel Lewis was and where the, where the rest of the troops were. But the next morning when the when the troopers come back over to, to finish the fight, so to speak, uh, they found the Cheyenne had left and had escaped. 